to show you the incubator that we've built. But before we do that, I would like to introduce my team to you. This is my daughter. Uh, my son is the cameraman today. And I'm Tinas. Um, and we've built this incubator. It took us roughly a day to build it. And I want to show you all the features that it has. The incubator itself has certain dimensions. The dimensions are 600 millimeters by 540 millimeters by 390 millimeters. And essentially, it, we started by creating a polystyrene, polystyrene box. Now you can see the polyster, polystyrene here. It's got a thickness of 20 millimeters. And we bought it from our local hardware shop. The dimensions of the sheets were 1,200 millimeters by 500 millimeters by 20 millimeters. We bought three of those and actually used three of those. So what we did is we created a, uh, a box. We cut the polystyrene to size and we glued the box together with polystyrene glue. And we also used some uh, wooden screws, wood screws, just to... Uh, assemble the box and make sure that it um, helped with the drying of the glue. So, so, so that's quite important. Otherwise, you have to sort of keep everything together. The um, outside of the of the incubator, we then covered with pieces of hardboard that we cut to size. This is just old hardboard that we had, and the function of the hardboard. It's really just to protect the polystyrene from any damage. And um, then you also see that we created these holes in the um, cardboard just to make sure that we've got access to the polystyrene for the installation of the different components, the, the, the light bulb, the thermostat, etc. Um, you can cut more than is required because um, then you just end up using the ones that you actually need. We then used uh, duct tape to cover the sides. Um, it provides a bit of extra rigidity, but it also improves the aesthetics um, of the incubator. If we move over to the left, of the incubator left hand side you'll see that we installed a light bulb this is a 60 watt incandescent light bulb we also insert installed a thermostat this we bought from a shop that supplies parts for fridges and refrigerators the uh, power source for the light bulb is a 220 volt from our socket um, from wall socket. We live in South Africa, so we've got 220 volt. Those living in America will have 110 volt. The thermostat is essentially a switch, so you can see that the 220 volt will come into the light bulb. It will leave the light bulb. It then basically goes to the thermostat. It returns and exits the incubator here, and this goes back to the 220 um, power supply. The way it of course works is that as the temperature goes up, it gets maybe too hot, then the thermostat will switch off. If the temperature decreases, at some point it will be too cold again, the thermostat will switch on and the light bulb will go on. If we then look at the incubator inside you will see that we installed two fan fans we've got a fan here and we've got a fan here the idea here is that the light bulb generates the heat the fan blows the heat 
in the direction of the thermostat. If the thermostat gets too hot, it will switch off the light bulb, as I explained earlier. Now, the two fans is probably a bit of an overkill, but we had the two fans. We got this big one for free, and we got this one for about 29 dollars, 29 rand, that's about two dollars. So the idea is really that the wind blows sort of in this direction, and it makes a turn here, and that fan blows the wind in this direction, so you get circular movement of the air um, to make sure that there's um, a good distribution of heat in the incubator. It's quite important to have the energy source, your heat source here, and your thermometer very really close by, because if it's far apart, uh, you get very large fluctuations in the temperature inside the and in the incubator. You need that switching on and off of the light to happen as, as relatively quickly. It's about, it takes about a minute or so uh, for that cycle to happen. The power supply for the fans is a 13 volt power supply. So if I can show you the, uh, the outside, the, the wires from the two fans, they are basically connected in parallel. They go into the box, but we've connected them here with this connector, and like I said, this is a 13 volt power supply, so this basically goes to a, a little transformer. This comes from a very old answering machine, you don't, don't get those anymore, but this provides about 13 volt. You don't have to use specifically 13 volt for those t uh, 12 volt fans. Anything from 9 volt to 13 volt is 100%. In order to control the humidity, we've added a couple of containers here at the bottom. You can see on the right hand side and then two there on the left hand side. Um, so that provides about the 60% humidity that we required. We've also inst installed a funnel with a little tube through which you can actually um, add some additional water. So you don't really have to open the, the incubator. You can simply add the water through the channel and it runs into the little bucket at the bottom. An additional feature that people sometimes forget is also the idea of heat capacitors. So we've simply added one, two bottles of water, there's also one lying at the bottom with water, so they're closed containers, so the idea is really that they store heat and as you maybe open the incubator or the light goes off temporarily or whatever, then there's heat that is uh, provided inside the incubator again, so that has a stabilizing effect on the temperature. The one th feature that we think is <coughs> quite important and that makes it very easy to turn the eggs without even opening the incubator is this little table and um, tray that we installed. So if we put an egg between these two delts, it's very easy to turn the eggs from the outside simply by sliding the tray back and forth. So then, like with a simple movement, you can actually turn all 25 eggs in a couple of two or three seconds without opening the incubator. One thing to keep in mind is that the little table at the bottom has got a couple of lattices running through. And it's important to have as many rows as you actually want eggs because if there are too many of these lattices then the eggs turn and they actually get stuck um, and you don't want that because then you will simply have a situation where certain eggs aren't properly turned. The little table that we built here at the bottom is simply been 
um, wrapped with shade cloth um, so that still provides for air movement between the bottom and the top sections of the incubator. The little tray that moves is simply moved by this little delt. There's a little hook in the end and it goes into the side of the incubator and you can move the tray very easily. If we then go to the thermometers, you'll see we've got two probes hanging here. We've actually got two thermometers. We've got those two probes and they are connected to the thermometers at the outside. This one is our more accurate one. It's also, uh, it also has a hygrometer included. Well, the one at the bottom, we discovered it's, it's, it's overstating the temperature by about 0 0.3 degrees. Um, but this is our more accurate one. It also shows the minimum and maximum temperatures that um, was reached uh, in, the, in, the, in the prior period since it actually has been reset. To build this incubator will cost you roughly about 500 rand or so, somewhere between 35 and forty dollars. So what we're going to do now is we're going to close up it up, put it on the lid, and we're going to allow it to reach its temperature again, and then we're going to come back and show you what that looks like. Yes, we're back. Um, the the temperature has stabilised. You will see that the temperature at the moment is 38.0 uh, and the humidity is 60% so ideally the humidity should between, be between 55 and 60% so we're very happy with that. Now the temperature on this side is slightly cooler so if I just give that medical thermometer you'll see it reads 37.1 so a difference of almost uh, one degree, about 0 0.9 degrees between the one side and the other, but we're happy with that. So if we come around to the other side and we have to maybe then sort of uh, adjust the humidity or the amount of air that comes into the um, incubator, we've got these holes that we showed earlier and we can simply plug them. So um, we've got an old ear plug that you can maybe just put in there and you can cover up those holes, so you can actually regulate the uh, amount of air going into the incubator. Um, with regards to the humidity, you can of course add additional containers of water just to increase the surface area. And we've also got some sponges that you can add to the water just to increase the surface area of the, of the, of the water. That you would actually do on, in the last three days, where a high humidity is required of about 75%. Um, so keep that in mind. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the video and that you find it useful. See you next time.